guys, and welcome back to Satisfactory, where I need to take you guys on a little bit of a tour of the extension that I built last night. But first, we have a little bit of a uh, mystery on our borders. A mystery that has been brewing since the first episode, and we had, came around and had a little explore around here, picked up a whole load of stuff, and also uh, saw this. But we can just a uh, biggity bam throw a few of those in there. I think it's just going to take it. We can pull this down and we will open it up. I don't know what's in here. What is this? A hard drive. A hard drive with fix it data. Analyze it in the MAM to salvage its content. Well, that's good because we need to go to the MAM anyway. Last time before going to set up the coal factory, we put 10 carapaces in here, which is like sort of the second level of research for this. So let's see what she's got to say. A common engineering tool to assist you in your defense against the local wildlife. The blueprint is now accessible in Hub Tier 3. Hub Tier 3. That's probably the most uh, advanced thing I've ever had. Let's put that hard drive in there. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. We can definitely do that, though, uh, because there's a few things I want to do. Let's first start by going in here being like Hub Tier 3 rebar gun. Oh, that sounds cool. What's the biomass going to be made out of? We need 25 rotors. Hold on. Wickedly whack editing has got my back. All right, we've got a re rebar gun. And I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. I go straight on to exploring what actually the rebar gun is. Look, we can make some spiked rebar and a rebar gun. So let's make one of these. Oh, man, the production time is a long... And I've got a feeling we're probably going to want to make this spiked rebar off of the, uh, the rods, look. And just make that into a machine somewhere. That can definitely be a thing. But first, I just want to test and see what we've got. I also would like to uh, quickly knock up a color gun. Uh, this is going to help us in our tour. I've not actually used the color gun in any way, shape, or form yet. So uh, I, I think it's going to be good. Let's uh, also get the color cartridge. I have no idea how this is made either. I'm, I'm uh, not made, used. I'm hoping... We'll do with that. We'll do with that. I'm hoping that there's some sort of like color select wheel in the same way we can do the emotes or whatever. But uh, let's start with... No, let's start with my inventory. Open up the rebar gun. Look at that. So we've got no loaded ammo. We've got 21... In the thing. R to reload. Clunk. Is it literally just a single shot? It looks like a single shot. What can we shoot? Where do I know that there's some bad guys? I don't actually. I've cleared out most of the bad guys. I suppose there's some all the way bam, over that way. Hey, that that's pretty cool. Is it a persistent item? Let's let's shoot a tree and see if we get a uh, our ammo back. Bam. Okay, does it stick in the tree? Did it stick? It did stick in the tree. Can I grab it back? I can't grab it back. Okay. Oh. And it's only persistent for a few seconds. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That gives us access to uh, defense. Probably better than the Xeno Zapper. Uh, but also we've then got this color gun. So if I press R to reload, no, that looks like uh, not the winner there. Uh, I guess this is only gonna color. Let's try that, the blue. And if, can I do, aha, right click definitely did the work for me here. Okay, so let's have a look. I like this color, black. No, you don't. Had, oh, select color. There we go. All right. Okay, cool. Well, in that case, let me quickly go through here. We're going to start putting down a whole bunch of colors here. I want to first right click. I want a nice dark blue. Like, can I edit these? It says I can edit them. Oh, uh, look, look. We've got previews over here. That's nice. Mm -mm, looks good on the miner. Looks amazing on the wall. We're going to have to try a bit of that. But I wanted to give you guys a small tour of what's going on in the base now. And I actually think the best place to start is the end. I know, sounds crazy, but we are going to give it a go. I was hoping that we could, like, colour through systems depending on what they feed into. But we, we will go and have a little bit of a play. I thought I hooked up... Yeah, here we go, here we go. Let's let's go down one more. First thing I want to point out, look at all the walkways I've got running around here now. We can go to just about anywhere via the power of walkway. We have got ourselves some iron reinforced plates here. I want to put these as a blue colour. Let's have a look. That's not quite the blue that I'm looking for. I should be able to edit these if I really wanted. Let's let's do it. Let this this grey at the end here. Let's get rid of that. Oh, there's so much range to play with. Okay, so let's try that. We got this, this, and this. All right, these three here are our iron reinforced plates. If we turn around and run over this way, we can see where all the materials are coming from. So you guys might remember that I put this massive production line of screws in last time. This is the plates that we had from, from the first episode. There, there go the plates through there and in through this wonderful splitting system. Uh, these screws are very interesting. You can see this splitter here. This is because... 
three, three screw machines are working together. Uh, this middle one is getting split up into two, and then these two lines here are merging. Now, 90 plus 45 gives us a lot. Uh, gives us over 120, which is uh, what I want to have on these lines going in here. Uh, so that we can go through and put them... I really wish I could walk through there. That's Of all, the, of all the, the things I want, I want two conveyors on either side with a door in the middle. That that would be really nice. If I could get that done, that would be brilliant. Uh, so you can see that we are feeding in 120 screws per minute for uh, 20 iron plates. Uh, and everything kind of balances out there. Uh, that's, that's pretty strong and pretty cool. And that's kind of what we did with everything that you saw last time. Let's, uh, let's get up and over this way. Make my way through. So you can see all the, uh, the smelting that Gary's on over here. Uh, splits into the smelters, which then, if I can get up here, splits into the constructors. Um, this little one on the side here. This was an extra one. And I should also point out that I've got a lot more ore than is currently being processed. We can have another row of these guys, uh, which I do intend to do. We're going to have them with the modular frames. That That's a, an absolute must. So as well as the iron plates, the reinforced iron plates that you can see coming through here, we've also got rotors on the go. And that's these three machines. And I have no idea what color to make rotors. Let's uh, let's open up and have a look. I think this is the standard orange I No, no, no. Let's try again. I think this is the standard orange color scheme that it comes with normally. Does that change? Oh, that does change it just a bit. Okay, so these are rotors. We're going to go with these being rotors. You can see we've got quite a few... Oh, what a jump. Quite a few lines of screws coming from different places. So these are two lines of screws that we originally used for plates. But as they were up here, I was like, you know what? Why take things downstairs when we've got these rows already? So I kept these ones up top. See, it didn't quite work out. We've got more coming up from down below to make sure that all the numbers balance out. Um, and that's the rotors. So that that's pretty cool. Working pretty strong there. And over here, everything that I kind of just had left over, <laughs> I had one uh, one half of a smelter left over, so I brought that up and told it to make, well, for starters, some screws to go into the rotors being made, but more important than that is we've got this one little container here making modular frames. And this has been left here making for a long, long time, whilst I went around and thought about lots of other things. So I've ended up with this stack system on the go, and we should be able to now use the conveyor belt Mark IIs to bring it down in here. I like the way this stacking goes down into the into the space elevator. This, that, that, uh, this is nice. I like this. I like this very much. And now we should have a whole bunch of these modular frames going in here. Now, this is not good enough, because as I said, I just did that with the leftover from having three reinforced iron plate machines and three rotor machines. What I want to do is make three modular frame machines, but obviously that is going to require <laughs> for each modular frame machine, you need three of these reinforced iron plate machines to not just com get completely swamped out. And that's that's a lot of work. All right, so that's everything I got up to last night. That's about three hours gameplay to uh, rebalance all of that out. Oh, the analysis of the hard drive is completed. Select your desired reward. Hmm, alternative blueprint for stitched iron plates. Meh. Nah. Alternative uh, for screws. I'm not sure about that. Let me let me let me try and figure out some numbers here and get back to you. Okay, so what I'm thinking here, hey, we brought this up, is screws to get 90, which is the same here, 90 per minute, uh, is 15 rods, and 15 rods is 15 ingots. I think this is actually worse off, right? I think it might be. I don't, I don't know if I want any of these, to be honest with you guys. I think, if anything, I want the alternate stitched iron plates, six plates and 30 wires i mean that really does 7.5 plates per minute as opposed to the five that you get normally six plates th yeah I, I, yeah yeah we'll definitely go with this one i don't know when we're gonna actually make Dead the machines the that do that but we'll oh. salvaged and can be repurposed to unlock an alternate recipe salvaging more hard drives will provide additional alternate recipes I'm not sure if I'm ever going to actually get round to using it, but one thing I want to do quickly before the end of this segment... Blah. Yeah, much better. Ah, uh, disappoint, guys. Disappoint. Can't colour the tractor. I really wanted to colour that tractor up. Ah. Uh. 
So another thing that I did is to double out the coal power production, which, uh, you know, it does us pretty well. We've got a total of, let's have a look, 500 megawatts on the go. That's pretty cool. That's 10 units of 50 megawatts each. And the, uh, the, the very encouraging thing is that the coal is backing up. So we could probably probably fit a whole bunch more in here but there are some things that i want to explore around this way and to do so i'm not gonna open my build menu i'm gonna put this into my hand hopefully we're gonna have enough shots here to deal with whatever we need to deal with it's gonna be very interesting oh i'll take some of that healing thanks uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what is around this corner because as we were driving past a few days ago we noticed that there was a whole nest of stuff down here and possibly even a hole in the background but i'm not I'm not sure about the hole in the background. Let's go and have a look and see, because this is a place that we said we would explore. I was kind of hoping... Let's press B and see if we got some light. I was actually kind of hoping that this would be a cave entrance here. Is this it? No. Ah, that, that's a bit of a shame, because we saw this place be, like, super hostile a couple of times now, and I was kind of hoping there was a cave entrance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk around until I can find something. Ah, uh, look at the, Do you see that right there? It looks like it should be a cave entrance, right? But as we get closer and closer and closer, we can see it's actually just a bit of ground texture that comes up. And uh, that's, a, that's a shame. I really thought we were going to have a cave adventure then. I really did. Uh, that's, maybe, maybe we can find another one somewhere. Maybe down here. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I may not have found a cave, but the view here is pretty spectacular. There's that large mountain again I would really like to go see. But I also see, there it was, a green power slug up there. So let's go and try and get that if we can. I really was hoping we could have maybe a cave explore, as, as I've said a couple of times. Really disappointed that the caves were not a thing. Uh, let's go across here. This, this is nice. I noticed that I can get underwater if I jump in the water from a, from a high distance, but if I try and, like, enter in... Beautiful. Yellow power slug. That's even better. Wow, so far we've only found green ones. I don't know what the yellow ones are gonna do for us. The crystals on this slug can be harvested and converted into two power shards that function with current fix-it technology. Several buildings would be capable of performing over 100% capacity if infused. The derived blueprint is now accessible in Hub Tier 2. But yeah, as I was saying, if we just kind of walk in the water, you can see we can only really swim on top. Even if I push down, press some random buttons to try and go underwater. I, what, what, what's that on the floor? I don't know. I don't know. But if we come across and find somewhere we can jump, for instance, off the same place that we got the yellow slug, and we just go up and... There we go. Look, we're underwater. Ah, yeah, oh, we stayed under there for a little bit. There was definitely some nice sort of uh, sticks and stuff on the floor, but nothing really to worry about. Wow, I want to go quickly explore. Do you reckon, what, from there to there? Swimming over this way, I saw the glint of a valuable resource. I th can, can I get on this edge, please? I think it's just limestone, though. Yeah, it is just limestone. That's uh, that's okay. That's, that's all right. It's not quite what I was hoping for, but more concrete, more good, right? Uh, let's have a look over here. I, I don't think we're going to be able to get up here until times of extreme climbing capabilities. Maybe when the uh, jetpack comes in or something like that. Can I jump over this way? All right, we did that one all right. Look at that over there. Man, we might have to just keep exploring this uh, this little beach system. Uh, no! I thought I'd done it. I thought I'd done it. Oh, that's a shame. I'm now stuck underwater, am I? Oh, that's not great. And with the setting of the sun, I've actually gone around and explored the majority of this little land shelf that we've got on this side of the water. It's looking pretty good, looking pretty good, but nothing to take advantage of. I didn't see any caves or anything like that. I haven't been up this this little rock here. Maybe we can go see if something's going on, but I've got a feeling the next, uh, next little section that I'm going to do is going to be back at the factory. See this rock? See how it's got no collisions? What's going on with that? Collisionless rock. Not great, because I wanted to use it to get up there. Hmm, uh -huh. copper node up here. I mean, that's nice, but it's not really useful. Unless we've got some iron or something around there. Maybe we can make some uh, some, some plates with it. Remember, we've got that alternate uh, alternate recipe now to make stitched iron plates. That's what it's called, right? I'm fairly sure I ran these trees over when we were laying all this out. Hmm, I wonder how they've grown up. As the sun goes down, I just have a quick amendment to make to the factory tour that we did. Uh, I literally just ran a little bit of the mathematics in the background, and I figured out that for the three, uh, three reinforced plates and the three rotor machines up there, turns out 120 ore isn't quite enough. And in fact, the only thing we're missing, and it really is annoying that it is the only thing we're missing, 
is a singular screw machine worth of parts. If we could just fit one more screw machine into this system, we would be 100% efficient for what we've got going. But as it is, or like if the rotors were being constantly eaten, but as it is with the rotors, if the rotors were being eaten, this is only producing uh, 45 screws on this line here. 45 screws per minute when they actually need 120. <sighs> That's not bad, not still terrible, but it did mean that I took away the modular modular frame machine here and we're gonna go over this way the other side of the space elevator we have ourselves a couple of nodes why am i not running very fast that's a bit of a shame we got ourselves a couple of iron nodes now i could filter off one set of iron and take it over that way and then have an iron but, th but that's not what we're gonna do no 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 i'm gonna rip this down now remember that we've got the connection over there uh, and i'm also gonna make two mark two um miners but of course i've left everything everything in the tracker okay i've not brought the plan the power in because i'm still planning but we've got the two miners here outputting 120 each and i've got this nice big flat space here where i'm going to put down a whole bunch of smelters we're then going to like build a tower upward and uh we're going to basically copy the section at the bottom because we want to try and make uh, a whole bunch of plates if do i do i have let me see if i've got in the production assembler no i just i just want to build one thanks very much we're just going to throw that down it's all right i'm going to rip it back up in a second modular frames you can see we just need three reinforced iron plates and six iron rods now thankfully the reinforced iron plates if we can also come down to the constructor here uh, we should be able to make it through an alternate method which we've not actually learned yet hold up hold up Okay, running over to my beautifully painted hub. I love that green, by the way. Uh, we should be able to come into the here. Alternate plates. I'm going to select that milestone, and we're going to put these in here. Okay, that should be awesome. And we can then start making this also in the assemblers, I believe. Yes. Oh, oh no. Let's, let's go back. Uh, alternate stitched iron plate. Yes, you can see iron plates and 30 wide. That is pretty good. We should think about how to use that. It's 15 per minute, which is the output of a machine, and then 75 per minute. Hang about. Let's go and look at the wire machine. Producing 45 per minute. Hmm. Okay, so I just went through and worked out some more numbers. For 75, uh, 7.5 stitch plates per minute, so you need 16 plates and 75 wire per minute. The 75 wire per minute is more than a single wire machine produces, so I'm probably not going to be doing it like that. I I don't know what it is, but every time I go to hit the record button, the nice sun that gives everything a nice colour seems to be going behind that mountain over there, and we have to deal with dusk. I'm sorry about that, guys. I don't know why. I'm literally running out of time for this episode, though, so I'm afraid we are going to just have to live with it. Uh, if we come on in here, we can see that we've got a whole bunch of stuff that I want to do. This is, of course, a four... Oh, I'm not actually carrying enough plates on me, am I? Uh, this is, of course, for the yellow shards. I don't, I don't have it. Oh, I'll, be, I'll be back. So after that, a boarded attempt. Let's try and put all these things in here this time properly. All right, awesome. Yellow shards are pretty good. That's like double the power from the green shards. So that's cool. So why was I running out of materials? You may have seen it with my careless looking around. I built this thing. Oh my gosh, look at this thing. Also, look at the power of my torch. That's pretty cool. Trying to sort out these, these uh, conveyor belts here was awkward let me tell you but let's go through and talk about what we've got here uh, i suppose the first thing we should say is this is all in aid of just getting one modular frame machine up and running yeah i know right i know also wow look at look at all the, the the walkways and the stairs and everything else that i've got running so this entire place is to get this place running okay that's that's what it's all about so we've got like the reinforced iron plate machine. Now, this is actually overkill, and I need to put a storage machine there, or at least a splitter or something like that. But that's the uh, that's the plates. Down here is the screws, and over that side is the rods for the, for the frame. So these make the screws for the reinforced plates, and these make the rods for the modular frame. So these two are kind of like um, the, the secondary production, if you will. We've also got, like... The rod ma manufacturing back there. Oh, it's got so dark. Why? Why has it got so dark? And then underneath, of course, we have plate manufacturing down there and just all the smelters. Just this, this whole line here, it's just all smelters. 
Now, are we ready to find out whether we've actually got enough power in the system at the moment? I don't know. Let's go over... Let's, let's do this an interesting way. Let's come over here and have a quick read at this. Okay, we're only consuming 160, and I've basically doubled it out. So it should take us up to, like, 3, 340, something like that. Let's have a look. Hit the power line, connect it up. All right, this should be good. I, I want to go... Hey, what am I stuck on? A boulder, maybe? I want to go and have a look at the ore flowing. Let's see how it's running. Hopefully, everything is properly set up and ready to go. Uh, I, I I don't know for definite, though, because, you know, you, you end up putting a load of stuff down, and you're like, did I... Did I actually configure that machine or not? So we're going to go through and find out where it finishes. Uh, where where it stalls, rather. Uh, this, this is quite good. I like the little crossover point here. There's a lot of places where I have crossovers that I don't like, but that one, that one works out pretty well. All right, all these smelters seem to be eating without backing up. They've all got green lights, so that's pretty good. And these ones, well, we've got a green light there, but we've got a bunch of yellows. Is that because they're not set? No. Green. I suppose it'd be red if they're unconfigured. I don't. I don't know if there's a thing for that. Uh, but these now all come through here. Go up my least favorite conveyor belt in the entire build. I. I just don't like it. The, the major reason I don't like it. Let's come up here so that I can show you properly. Is this? I. I I'm not. I'm not keen on it. To be fair, this. This little conveyor here. Uh, it comes up and. Yeah, fair enough. There's room. There's room to walk. But uh, that. Oh, it's proper dark in here. What? Oh, it's the smoke. Look, it's the smoke coming up from underneath. Okay, that's fine. I was like, oh, my torch has suddenly stopped working. Well, that there, like that. Uh, that really, oh, oh wow, that really spun me out. Uh, but anyway, the ingots come up. Here's the rod machine. Uh, the rods are being made into screws. No, the ingots are being made into rods, and then the rods are going into the machine here, and I have not set up the screw machines. Wee! See, this is why we're doing this. Okay, that's all the screw machines set. I came through and did the whole double merge thing, where we split the one in the middle and uh, merge it with the two sides to give us a, a more consistent output. Uh, we got four of those. I really only wanted three, but given the way that this works, I was kind of stuck with four. I wasn't stuck. I, I could have just siphoned half this off and taken it over that way, but I was like, no, no, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. And here's the rods. I really dislike this bit. It just kind of sticks out the side of the the factory. It's all right. It's workable. It does stuff. Um, this goes up here, and then uh, totally not. Totally not, because there was a conflict between the stairs and that conveyor belt. We've got a ramp coming up here. Wait a minute. These aren't outputting. What's going on here? Iron rod. Iron rod. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so back up the stairs. <laughs> Sorry, look, little, little, just noticed there was a little bit of a problem there. So back up the stairs, as I say, we come over, and there should be a whole bunch of rods flying up this conveyor now. Oh, look, the pod's back. Yeah, great. Nice. Okay, so here come the rods. Uh, and here are the screws. The screws are all in place, and the conveyors are... Uh, the uh, Sorry, the plates are all in place. Looks like I forgot to set this up. That's a little shame, but no a biggie. Uh, still doing all right on the power. I was a little worried that we wouldn't be. What's going on here? Why aren't you producing screws? Look at this. What's going on here? Why are your screws so slow? Ah, uh, it's because this is where you just got started. It's okay. Okay, it will warm up uh, shortly, I'm sure. All right, I'm sleuthing this down and trying to figure out why this one here isn't constantly outputting. Did we not get you right? There's a rod issue somewhere. Hmm. Hmm. Why is this not performing to spec? All right, it's because of my poor splitting system. Um, because I run a long line in and then split off, we've got to wait for each of these to back up before we reach 100% uh, efficiency, which is a bit of a shame, but that's all good. All right, let's go out and have a look. But I think with that, I am going to say thank you very much. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, let's not do that. I want to see an end product come out. we got to see end product come out first. 
So I waited for the machines to back up a bit. I even did a little bit of mining by hand to help back up the smelters. And whilst I'm not going to be uh, winning any crafts per second awards, we have got this constantly turning over without any downtime. So I will take that as a pretty good job. And with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time where we're probably actually done with this area until we get around to doing the uh, Minor Mark II when we can start upgrading the actual mining machines we are probably hitting some sort of limit even a limit with the belts now that I stop and think about it because even if we do upgrade the miners we can't output any faster than the belts will allow us to carry away hmm but I will see you then when we're gonna do that bye